Hello everybody, this is BKC back in From the Depths on my engine testing raft and yeah, I have to admit I might have an uh, engine building obsession um, but to, I had to expand the raft again. Um, today's topic, what I want to talk in the last video what we talked about is our core core layout, core slice, and core packing and um, today what I want to talk about um, is a little bit about um, your the same thing with the carburetors and turbochargers, the layout and attachments and um, carburetor spacing. And the carburetor spacing is the really really important thing. Um, and from the depths, the the engine designer. Um, most things you you know you you design it around a centralized crank so that's a you know a one meter block that you have to attach to and what that kind of does is it forces your motors to be like three or five or you know um, odd numbers and it's it's real real easy to do this and I've seen people do this on on craft too where they'll they'll build a craft that doesn't have a center line um, on, I, I, I'm I'm really bad, obsessive compulsive. That drives me nuts not having a center line. But I I know why some people do it. It gives you nice sharp bowels and stuff like that. You can make um nice pointy bits and stuff like that. Um, on engines, I'm kind of starting to see. Um, it's 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 almost impossible to fight that system. But I, I want to show you a case for fighting that system, or um, not necessarily fighting it, but um, because your motors are still going to be like three and four, um, fives. You know, there's a lot of different ways to get um, odd, no um, even numbers. Um, like uh, I think these motors over here are only four high um, because of the way I packed the. Um, the way I packed the core, they're only four high. Um, and if you do like a um, an inline turbo, a lot of times you'll get a four high motor. But you don't see a lot of four wide motors or um, even spacing parts. It's just too easy to put cylinder carb, cylinder carb, cylinder carb, where each cylinder is um, one space away or three spaces away, you know, where you'd put carb here and a carb here where it's three spaces away. That's a, a natural thing, um, the way the building system kind of pushes you to doing. But um, in recent, in a lot of my recently designed motors, I've been getting away from that and going with like um, even spacings. And I'll, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but for right now, what I want to go over is um, carburetors and attachments to, to turbos and um, how they how you what do we, how do we do it and um, the the first way and the most common way you'll see because most people will just put a cylinder down and then they'll put um, a cylinder a carburetor cylinder carburetor cylinder carburetor cylinder carburetor and the easiest way to attach to that um, if you put the non inline turbos in you're 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 gonna have a, a non you're gonna have parallel turbos you're not gonna have serial turbos and you're not gonna get any efficiency so are you only gonna get like I think maximum of I think it's like 18 percent efficient is the maximum you could get um, and you don't get maximum efficiency of 393 percent or whatever it is um, and the most common way to do that is just to flip your uh, non inlines upside down and the way you do that is um, you just put a block of wood put a block of wood on top of your carburetor and then your uh, inlines your non inlines will just you know stick to the carb and then once you do that you pull the block of wood off and you go back in and put in a straight pipe and um, this is really really good um, and it just has really one disadvantage in my eyes. Um, 
a, a good advantage is um, if you had a motor where you had your centralized crank running under this carburetor, you could put a cylinder here and a cylinder here, and you would get good sharing because each cylinder would see two carburetors. I mean, each cylinder would see a carburetor, so you'd get 200 horsepower out of the, the carburetor, and then each um, cylinder would see two carburetor. I mean, two turbos. So um, the engine block would report four turbos. Um, so you get good sharing on your turbos. You get good sharing of power, uh, which brings your density up. Your two turbos per carb is get pretty decent efficiency. And um, that's the benefit of it. And it's real easy to make a 5x5 five five motor because you could put your crank in the middle, put a, another carb on the other side, and you would have a 5. Well, this would be a 5x3 motor. Um, but if you did it on all four sides, you'd have a 5x5 a five five, um, motor. The uh, main disadvantage is you give up one of your sharing points with the crossover pipe right here um, because it crosses over but that's the only way you can connect um, a non-inline over a, a carburetor and have it connected um, is to give up one of your sharing points and as we've seen in the last video uh, where we talked about um, packing the core we kind of see that having a corner mounted um, carburetor um, is kind of more desirable because um, you could share with three sides of the carburetor with cylinders get 300 horsepower and still get efficiency parts stacked on um, and by doing that it opens you up to the second amount mounting position and it's done the same way you just put a block of fuel on it, but you just put them at um, at opposite corners. And the benefit to this over that um, is I could have a um, cylinder on this side, a cylinder on this side with my crank right here, and I can have um, more sh better sharing um, between the parts and get 300 horsepower per cylinder and then report these two carburetor I mean these two turbos to three cylinders so instead of being four turbos it would be six turbos so um, doing this on a corner mounted um, carburetor like on the edge right here of your crank with the crank running this away or on this particular case would be running up and down um, you can get better sharing, um, but it still it still has the same disadvantage. Um, you still mount the same way, block of wood. You put your two carbs and then replace it with an L pipe. Um, but you still lose out on that ability to put that supercharger here. And then if you, like on the hypercube, where there's a cylinder here, there's a cylinder here, and there's a cylinder under it, and then there's another carb right here, like in this layout. Um, the, the hypercube has this layout on one of its corner or two of its corners you know and then that's repeated over here and it's repeated on top and bottom um, for all eight of its carburetors um, if you didn't need the 2400 horsepower that the hypercube makes you could take out a cylinder and lose 200 horsepower and put a supercharger in between these and let it share and then you could do it again on the opposite side over here and do it again and uh, it would drop 200 horsepower every time but your low end efficiency would increase um, but it's still it's still um, is a little bit better than this because you have three uh, better sharing um, the only way you could really share this with three um, you kind of push past the uh, a, a by five engine. You start pushing into the sevens and um, I don't know if you can even can you go nine wide. I don't think you can. Yeah, you could go nine wide, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the most efficient. Uh, it definitely wouldn't be the most dense. Uh, you use a lot of adapters and you, by the time you get your crank and all your adapters on and then get this shared with uh, three cylinders. 
it, it, you start pushing out the uh, the seven and uh, nine wide motors, and it wouldn't be too dense. Um, with this layout, you could keep your by five layout. Um, I mean, a three by three core uh, with a with a five by five layout, and uh, still choose whether you want to share with three cylinders or um, give up, give up a little bit of density and power for a little bit of more um, low end efficiency by putting a supercharger in here. Um, the like I said, the downfall to it is that a supercharger, since it's odd spaced, a supercharger is the only thing you could really put in here because if you tried to put another carb, um, you really couldn't do anything because you'd put uh, an extra turbo in here where you couldn't use a non in line because you you can't go anywhere with it. Um, same same on this layout, you can't really go anywhere with it you can't go anywhere here uh, there's no way to go and it only connects even if you could go you'd have to go with a, um, an inline uh, which kills your binding box which makes your density go down your efficiency would go up but your d density would go down so we're still playing the design triangle and it would connect only to one carb so if you did this You'd have three cylinders that would be a little more efficient than the cylinders over here. Um, it, the, the motor really wouldn't care. In a campaign, it wouldn't really care. Um, your efficiency would go up. Your density would go down. Um, the, the engine calculation still would say, okay, we got these cylinders burning point zero two fuel. These are burning point, you know, zero one five, and it was still just average them all together and then draw your fuel from your tanks. It wouldn't really, the motor wouldn't care, um, but having an even spaced carburetor, I mean an odd spaced carburetor like this um, doesn't let you achieve maximum efficiency. Um, the better way to start achieving more better efficiency and I noticed this in um, a lot of my, the, my newer motors that I built um, this one this one this one um, let's see that one right there that one right there this one right here um, all my um, um, ultra efficient motors um, and this one, one of my favorite motors that we'll get into a little bit. Um, one of my favorite new motors. And it, I built it a while ago, but it was a really, it was terrible. I think it was like an F, an F efficiency, but I really liked the way it, the, the, it packed up and the way it looked. And I just couldn't quite figure out how to get it efficient enough to keep. And so I just let it sit back there. But recently I've been playing around with odd or even spaced carburetors and why even spaced is better than odd spaced is uh, for this fact um, if we go back to this scenario here we only got two um, two carbs per I mean two turbos per car we can't put any non inlines back in because no matter which way you face it the only way you could face it would be down um, but if you went down um, to connect it you would have to have a straight pipe that would go this way which would kill your sharing so you'd only have connection to one one cylinder which would uh, really 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 hurt your uh, efficiency it's, it's pretty much wasteful because what you're doing is you're putting three carbs I mean you're putting three turbos that's only going to be reported to one cylinder so it's kind of wasteful. You're not getting any sharing advantage um, off of that. And to get this on a, a cylinder, well, no, you could do it. Uh, you'd have to, you know, but you're in a set. You're in a seven wide. You're in a seven wide because you're gonna have to space the. Uh, you have to space the crank. You have to space the cylinder off the crank and put the turbo. On, the, the, no, you'd have to. 
I don't even know if you could do it because you'd have to you'd have to be two off of the crank. You'd have to be uh, two off of the crank, so you had a space behind the carb to circle the non in line behind it. So um, the the better the better use case scenario is a um, even spacing, and with the even spacing, all we're really doing is is we're setting this up side by side. And so what that does is you need two to get the 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 carbs evenly spaced, um, but that lets you get two car two turbos side by side. And then what it does is it lets you get a third um, turbo in by connecting the end lines like this. Um, and it's a very easy um, path. You could just put a, a angle pipe to go forward or backwards. You could go down and cross over to the other side of the motor. It's really, really um, efficient. It's good, and then you still have two points to connect for sharing. Um, so, if your crank was running down this way, with your cylinder here, a cylinder here, you could have a cylinder going this way off of the same crank, and each one of these carbs would make 200 horsepower and report back three carbs to each. I mean three turbos to each cylinder. So if you just made a let's see that would be four it'd be an eight cylinder. If you just ran a crank down here and 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 prefab that and uh put a cylinder here, a cylinder here, and made that a radio around the crank and then just copied this prefab four times around, um that would be eight cylinders and each cylinder would be reporting uh no, each cylinder would be reporting six turbos. So eight cylinders times um, six turbos, you'd be getting, you'd be reporting a ton of turbos. So that's the advantage to this system. Um, you still get can get good sharing with two connection points. It's still bad in the fact that you, if you wanted to uh, modify the lo the bottom end a little bit, um, if you put a supercharger on here, you you then you lose all your sharing. And then your turbos, your turbo count becomes inefficient because you're using too many turbos and you're not reporting them back to a lot of cylinders. Um, putting six turbos to report back to two cylinders is is extremely wasteful, and you're just better off going with two turbos per cylinder and doing a odd spacing. Um, but there is a second layout, and the second layout is this layout where you just forego the non inlines and just use all inlines. Now, this layout you can do three um, three turbos per carburetor by just c repeating this pattern again on this side, but then you don't get a lot of uh, sharing because you only have one connection point and the space in between here, this is the disadvantage to the space in between here, is that if you put a cylinder here and here, they only see 100 horsepower a piece and then the only out for the cylinder would be this way. Um, and the two cylinders are butted together so you lose an, the exhaust on top, you lose the exhaust on this direction, um, you got to connect to the crank on one direction so then the last direction is the direction you got to collect your exhaust from. So you can only get six turbos reported to that cylinder. No, you can only get you can only get three turbos reported to that cylinder no, two two turbos reported to that cylinder, and it um, with one exhaust out, which is not the most efficient. It, it it you can make some pretty dense motors like that, but it's not the the most efficient. Um, and then there is I found a way to use this this layout with even spaced carbs like this um, to actually get uh, what is it four four uh four turbos and a supercharger per every carb uh, and make zero fuel motors. That's what my zero fuel motor uses um, right here. Um, you see the carb has um, one turbo here, one turbo here, one turbo here, and one turbo here, and a supercharger per every um, 
turbo that gets me up to 10,677 power per fuel uh, reporting with zero fuel across the board and actually does not use any fuel um, it's a zero fuel motor 800 horsepower um, so once I once I figured out these two layouts I started building out some motors and I started seeing these layouts on other motors on the forums and stuff and um, I started building motors with them and I and I found some really surprising results now I did have a few motors on the platform already using this layout um, this motor right here uses it and actually uses the two cylinders behind in the empty space where you only where you you're wasting um, this exhaust you're wasting that exhaust um, you're wasting the exhaust facing the other cylinder so you only get one exhaust out out the back side um, but this motor is the most dense on this entire platform so it, it it's doing something right by wasting that space um, and there's another one. Oh, my motor, my very, very similar to that, but I went a slightly different route, um, foregoing a little bit of the density for efficiency. My motor um, has that layout where you you got two, where you're getting rid of the. You can't use this exhaust facing toward these carbs. You can't use these exhausts. You can't use the exhaust on the carb side. You can't use the exhaust facing the two cylinders. You can only use this one out. But this one also um, does something right. And um, I started building new motors with uh, those layouts. And kind of what I got, kind of what I realized with this is this is only too high. These both of these are only too high. Well, all of them are really too high. But um, I, I started saying, well, I could build motors that are only too high and still get them fairly efficient with that layout. So I built this motor. Uh, it's not the most dense, um, but the efficiency is fairly good. Um, and it's a five. It's a two by five by twelve. So two of the numbers are even. And um, it was 800 horsepower and it actually reports 0.1 fuel per cylinder um, and sometimes it actually pushes into the where it in some parts of the power bed very few spots there's a, I think two or I think there's two spots where it breaks into where zero where it uses zero fuel that just doesn't show up on the three test numbers um, I think it's like 25 to 30 percent it doesn't use fuel and then again it 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 or it might be at it might be a fifty something percent, fifty five to sixty six percent or something. It doesn't use fuel. Some somewhere it doesn't use fuel. Um, but it started. I started making all these like trying to test to see. Well, okay. Well, sometimes putting more um, cylinders gives you a better uh, fuel efficiency. Sometimes it gives you a better density. Um, so I, I built this motor which all I did is just kind of divide it out a little bit wider and uh, break it up into uh, instead of being four cylinders 800 horsepower I made it eight cylinders 800 horsepower to see if I could get the density up or the efficiency up and see what would happen and it really didn't do much it just made a bigger motor it did almost the exact same thing um, 1400 and 1463 at point four versus 1355 at point .4 um, and the density dropped you're actually better off just using this motor um, and then I said okay well this is the wrong way to go but it's the same you know layout I think that looks cool the little crossover pipe right there and uh, kind of looks like some kind of animal with legs and then I said well let's let's go the other route and we'll um, raise it up and try to get more superchargers I mean more turbochargers on there um, to get more efficiency and I came up with this motor and all I did is wrap another set of uh, inlines like I said get four uh, turbos per cylinder with the same core layout and uh, it pushed me into another um, it pushed me almost to a zero fuel motor this is very 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 similar specs 
as my zero fuel motor. Matter of fact, it has the exact same density as my zero fuel motor, 4.44. If you see that number, 4.44, and you got four turbos per carburetor, um, you're probably just right there on the edge of a zero fuel motor, or you've actually created a zero fuel motor, and you have to test it at every step in the RPM to see if it actually uses fuel or not because this motor actually reports zero fuel at 10 um, 148 but it actually uses fuel at some points in the power band very 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 little fuel like one fuel every five seconds or something like that um, but it seems like the crossover point for a zero fuel motor is uh, about 10 fit 10,500 maybe um, because my zero fuel m motor was at 10148 before I added the superchargers there to get that extra 5% which pushed it to like 10 10 6, 6, 7 or something like that and actually made it not use fuel and so this was a cool little layout and then like I said my zero fuels and my most dense motors use the other layout and uh, what other motor I built uh, I built these seven uh, five by five core motors they're really really big but they become a little bit more efficient you give up some density for efficiency over the most dense motors and they get the exact same numbers like spec wise is 6400 44 cylinders this is 32 cylinders 6400 and the density gets almost cut in half um, but the efficiency almost doubles, almost, not quite, almost doubles. Um, but these are pretty limited, and there's no core slicing alternation pattern. Um, but it, it's a radial version of this motor, this motor right here. It's just a radial version of that motor um, on a single crank. And... Uh, once I started playing with that, I didn't realize it at first, but I this motor back here that was like a F class motor, um, I think it only had um, vertical the uh, this the non inline standing up with two two supercharger two turbochargers per cylinder, and uh, I started looking at it, I said. Man, I could fit that. That's just a two space, and this is just a two space. I can take this um, turbo layout and put it to this core that I really truly like. And once I did, um, it took this F class motor and put it into like a A plus plus rating. It doesn't make it a zero fuel. It it uses um, it reports zero fuel at the 50% mark. Matter of fact, at 54%, it reaches maximum efficiency, almost at 6,000 power per fuel. Um, and it, it really just turned this motor around. Like, um, matter of fact, putting the carbs on and lay—I mean, putting the turbos on in this layout actually um, saved a lot of space around the motor, so it could fit in tighter spaces. Um, it still keeps the cool um, walkthrough um, uniqueness. This is the, what, what, the one cool thing I loved about this motor. You could walk through it. So if you had like an engine room that you wanted to actually maintain the walkthrough, you could actually put your, your uh, drop this down in the bilge and put your deck right here and you could actually just walk through the motor. I thought that was so cool and that's what I thought was unique about it. But when I'm laid these turbos down like this in that in that two by two pattern um, it brought the efficiency at 5,000 and I don't have any motor that's in that range um, all my motors are sitting in the like um, 3,000 and below or they go all the way to 10,000 and uh, so this motor is pretty unique and uh, it's now one of my new favorite motors um, and uh, what other motor I think there was oh yeah there's a couple small motors um, I used that carburetor layout on this small motor which is pretty unique but nothing special and then I turned it on its side and 
and uh, copied that pattern to double the power and it was a little bit better but it still wasn't good enough and then I uh, took the superchargers off and reconfigured the turbos again like the uh, that ultra efficient over there and I ended up with this tiny this small motor that actually is a pretty unique this is my uh, only like two cylinder 400 horsepower that reaches 2000 um, 2163 power per fuel before my most efficient small motor uh, 200 horsepower or 300 or 400 horsepower was this one but it had a terrible terrible density at uh, uh, 1.79 it only reached a, a 1298 power per fuel and so I would always use my little 3T here because it makes 400 horsepower at nearly the same power per fuel and uh, now I got a, another option it's a little bit bigger it gives up a little bit density but once again we hit that 444 that's some kind of magic number and I haven't figured out what that is but it has something to do with the even spaced carbs it definitely does and um, it, it really bumps the efficiency up so um, I, I uh, after a examining it and, and thinking about it and having a, several motors to compare to what hap what it seems to do is this layout is the most compact for a, a carb three three cylinders I mean three turbos per carb with an even carb spacing this is the most dense you could get the carb turbo layout to give a um, what I would call a medium efficiency like above um, above 2,000 3,000 into the 5 and 6,000 range um, but it's really hard to push any past anything past that um, to push past that, you have to, you know, raise these up, put another set of uh, inlines at the bottom. Then you lose out on your sharing. So you get limited. And then you start limiting density. Um, so you can push. Um, you can have a dense motor. You can get a medium density motor, really medium efficiency, um, and stay pretty compact. Um, because you can keep the power up by sharing and you can keep the efficiency up because it's pretty f efficient and you get a lot of sharing and the the carburetor turbocharger layout is pretty dense so it doesn't hurt your motor with a lot of plumbing and stuff um, and it makes a really really good balanced all around middle of the road you know high efficiency you know or medium if medium high efficiency medium high power medium high everything and when you go to this layout it has some drawbacks um, that if you stick cylinders in here you could get very very dense motors but not super efficient and then if you stick superchargers in here and wrap these in turbos you can get really 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 efficient motors but not very dense motors so um, it, it kinda once you look at it in hindsight you kinda see that this is just a good all-around these are all just good all-around bang for your buck if you're gonna go with the norm of making everything oddly spaced by having one component and having something in between it and having another that same component and just doing that with um, cylinders cranks carbs everything if you go with the odd spacing if you go with the even spacing and you don't have to you, you don't have to have like a four wide motor um, what you would do is because I've done it on this motor I've got even spaced carbs you space the carbs evenly along even numbered along the crank this away um, you can choose um, this layout or this layout 
this layout gives you kind of best of everything. Um, this layout lets you kind of diverges off from that layout and lets you either go ultra efficient, I mean ultra dense or ultra efficient, not both. And uh, if you want kind of like middle of the road, this layout works the best. And uh, this layout works for either ultra efficient or ultra dense because um, the densest motor on my platform is this one, which uses that layout. And my most efficient motor on the platform is this one, which uses that same layout. Um, and then everyone that uses this layout is in between, like between 2,500 all the way up to um, about 6,000 power per fuel with medium densities and, you know, pretty respectable uh, power. Um, and I hope that kind of shows and illustrates um, some of the differences in um, carb layouts. Um, where they're kind of best used. Um, these are your most common. Um, this is the, probably the best layout for corner mounted carbs, keeping a even spaced. And once you start getting into oddly spaced um, carburetors, you have, a, a, I guess I'd call it a, a good center of the design triangle layout. And then you've got a divergent layout where it diverges into um, this kind of sits in the center, but you got to choose whether, well, I guess it sits on the line. It pushes to one line and you got to choose whether you want either ultra dense or ultra efficient. And um, kind of shows some of the importance of kind of getting away from the box thinking that the, the, the system wants you to use, you know, um, oddly spaced stuff and start spacing even and you can get d way different varied motor designs and um, I'll um, see you guys in the next one